So I recently just got this monochrome camera, the ZWO ASI 178mm, and I'm using it for deep sky mostly. But is it any good for deep sky? I know it's good for planetary, but is it any good for deep sky? In today's video, I'm going to explain all the reasons why I think it's good for deep sky. Alright, and bad as well. Alright, without further ado, let's get started. As I always do in my reviews, let's first start off with the pros. This may be a pro or a con depending on your preference, but personally I like this as a pro. The ZWO ASI 178mm monochrome camera is actually um, has a very tiny sensor of 2.4 microns. Now that's good for planetary, but what about deep sky? Well, if you're photographing like really faint, tar far away targets like the Whirlpool Galaxy, for example, and you have a small scope like the William Optics Xenostar 61, well, then you're going to probably need a camera like this because it has that good small sensor. Now, in terms of bigger nebulae and stuff like that, like for example, the North American Nebula or Orion Nebula, this may not be such a great option, especially if you have a higher focal length scope already. Another pro of this camera is obviously the price. It's a very good price for what you're getting from monochrome and plus the, picks, the sensor size and the resolution. It's just great all around. I mean, you're getting a pretty good deal. Another pro of this camera, since it's monochrome, is it picks up a lot of signal. I've noticed even in short like 30 second exposures, I'm able to capture a lot of the veal nebula. Now that we got that out of the way, on to the sad stuff, the cons. The sad thing about this camera is that, well, it's really noisy and there's a ton of amp glow. That's, those are the biggest cons for me. Um, I've noticed a ton of amp glow, especially in the top right corner. It's literally awful with amp glow. Um, uh, it's just terrible. I mean, there's too much washout in terms of, in the top right corner, so much amp glow. Um, if you don't know what that is, it's basically like white light that's like in the corners of the camera. Uh, the corners of the... Um, picture when you take it and you can actually see it through the individual picture files which is not good of course you can remove them with flat frames you know just taking the flat frames and day or something when it where, where, however you want to take them but um they don't work too well for me because they're extremely it's ex the amp is extremely bad like really really bad so yeah in terms of picture quality very noisy definitely really noisy um i'd say a little too noisy for my preference um yeah, because the noise is pretty bad. The signal noise ratio, I would say there's a lot of noise in it. Um, overly grainy. I recommend doing dithering, dithering for sure if you have the chance, if you uh, have an auto guider. Um, but I will say that this camera has gotten me some pretty good results with the Veal Nebula. So yeah, that's, that's another pro. Another con of this camera, obviously, is of course the sensor size being small. Now, even though this is a good thing because you can zoom more, the bad thing is, is that you're going to add more graininess to the image, you know. Just an overall bad experience in terms of noise. So yeah, you're really going to add some noise to that when you add in the small sensor. The final con. This is not a really bad con because of price, but it has no cooling system, which makes a lot more noise happen anyway, so yeah. Now, if you want to watch my video on the Skywatcher EQM35 Pro review, um, I have it right here if you want to check that out. Maybe you can get one to go along with this camera. Oh, you'll, oh, you'll probably need a telescope for that as well to mount this thing. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up. And if you like my content, please subscribe. Are you considering purchasing this camera? Let me know that in the comments below. Otherwise, till next time, clear skies.